You are now listening to the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, best-selling author of the book, Stay the Course, and Maxwell Leadership Certified Team Member, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some tips and techniques to advance yourself up next. Today's episode is sponsored by yours truly, Dominic Dom Brightman's wonderful book, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success. Grab it on ebook, audiobook, or paperback book and share this gift to your friends, family, heck, even no matter what season it is for that wonderful person in your life that needs to advance their next level in their career or just needs a quick pick-me-up to get through their day and beyond to thrival level. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the High Live Real Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, it's the Going North Podcast. And we got another super special, awesome human for you today, courtesy of my good buddy, Mr. Eminem. That's right, indeed, the rapper all the way out from Canada. Well, actually from Texas. I think he's out in Texas now. So yeah, the great migration is in effect y'all folks love texas because everything is bigger there indeed but it ain't about texas y'all it's about today's guest who is a career change coach that helps corporate professionals adapt their careers for accelerating changes taking place in the employment landscape y'all so that's right those tectonic plates keep shifting via the careers y'all and he's even developed a proven system you hear that right folks a proven system that helps professionals move beyond just for their fulfilling daily job or heck even the job they hate requirements to building a career platform for the future so let's give it up for the mighty tp himself the tantalizing and professional himself tony pisanelli how you doing today tony right dom yourself uh doing great with all the r's perfect and uh thank you for the opportunity to get my message across to your audience uh, it's appreciated Oh, yeah, across indeed. And I learned today that you're actually in Australia. <laughs> That's right. So that means he's a future teller, y'all. And he says there's sunny weather, at least at this time of the recording. So that's right. That means sunny weather might be coming our neck of the woods, wherever you're listening to. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, my goodness, as you know, with all bios, there's always the stuff that people tend to forget. So, am I filling in any cavities I may have missed about you, Tony? I think you pretty much covered it um, from a high-level perspective, and um, we can fill in some details as we go. Uh, so D and tails, all right. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. That's right, indeed. So my goodness, so at the age of 13, did you see yourself where you are today being a career coach? Definitely not, no. I um, At the age of 13, I grew up, uh, to parents who came out from Italy in the 50s, Dom. And um, they were individuals who had their e- education cut short by virtue of the fact that they worked on farms and um, family priorities meant that um, they had to cut their education and go to work doing manual labour. So that sort of prompted them, them to come out to Australia to develop a better life for themselves and for their children. And one of the key messages that they instilled in me was the importance of an education and getting a safe, secure, professional job, working for a large employer, which I did. And then uh, what happened, Dom, about two or three years into my career journey as an accountant, things got a little bit desperate for me because even though I had the secure job, I was well paid and I was highly respected because I worked for this prestigious company. On the inside, it was a different story. I was really quite sort of dissatisfied with doing accounting work and I found myself going to walk walks at lunchtime in nature to escape what felt like a prison sentence. And that was sort of the beginnings if you like, of observing people and how well, how they went about managing their career. So certainly at the age of 13, had no inclination. And I think a lot of people 
don't really have a good understanding of themselves and what they want to do at the age of 13. So for me, it was more of a journey of discovering myself along the way. That's what I'm talking about indeed. And discovery indeed. And heck, that's the beautiful thing about having parents who are gung-ho about making sure their children have a better opportunity for creating more success indeed because that's what we all definitely want to have in life especially if we're parents ourselves and want that for our kids too it's like yep we want you to have it better y'all that's right indeed and self-discovery is right because heck i guess uh in a way uh you kind of discovered your way to where you are today <laughs> in a way and finally decided to put pen to paper and be a author of two books if i'm not mistaken now right well it's really one so the the first, I've just the first book was around the corporate journey, and then people said to me, well, "Why did you focus on corporates when the message in the book equally applies to other uh, occupations, if you like?" <laughs> so I've, um, <laughs> I'm releasing a second edition of the book, which is called the Phoenix Career Principles, and it's aimed at a more generic career path, not just corporates. Because the underlying theme about taking control of your career in today's fast-changing world, because uh, as I've discovered, and I think probably most of your audience, if you leave your career <laughs> in the hands of your employer, you might end up in a situation where it's a little bit desperate for you. Uh, a lot of people believe that their employer will look after them. Uh, their sold messages that you know, this is one big happy family and then the day arrives where they don't no, no longer need what you have to deliver and you're out the door. And that becomes a huge reality check for a lot of people. And I absorb, observe some really hardened, successful professionals really struggle with that moment, which became the motive, one of the motivations for writing the book and helping people to actually take control of their working life sweet that's what i'm talking about indeed that's right and i just love the name of the book of the second edition the phoenix principles indeed so it was the title inspired by the story of the mythical phoenix bird i'm assuming exactly the bird that reinvents and is rebirthing continually so it's letting go of the old by setting fire to itself and creating the new and that's one way I believe you really need to, a path you need to follow to survive in the employment landscape today is continually reinventing yourself and staying at the cutting edge, Dom. Oh, heck yeah, you're definitely right about that. And heck, you even brought up a very important point earlier about the fact that, hey, like not all employers will take care of you the way you think. Like there's there's some good employers out there, but also there's some bad ones some of them very intentional some of them not intentional it's like oh yeah let's focus on the processes oh this person's so good they want to get promoted but their contribution's so good i kind of got to keep them in this metaphorical cage here <laughs> exactly yes um and it's interesting one of the angles i work with people on dom is when they do get fired for example something i was fortunate to escape, although I got close to the guillotine a couple of times during a 30-year career, which is inevitable, is to help them see that there's an actually opportunity that comes from it. I came across a quote recently, Dom, by a gentleman called Hal Lancaster, and he said, getting fired is nature's way of telling you you didn't belong there anymore. And in working with people, I often ask them, well, what part of you really was thinking of being somewhere else? And more <laughs> often than not, they actually, I remember speaking to one guy, he said, yeah, I was stuck in this IT job, but I actually would sit at my desk in my cubicle thinking I'd actually love to be a motivational speaker and write books. And then once he got fired from his job twice, on both occasions, Dob, believe it or not, it was, it was approaching Christmas. So even Christmas is not, you know, 
out of bounds in terms of what an employee, when an employer can dismiss you. And he said, well, I'm not going to go back there. I've experienced the acts twice. And today he is a, an author. He's a speaker. He's an entrepreneur living the dream. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny that you mentioned that because funny enough that originally, <laughs> like that was funny enough my degree is in IT, funny enough. <laughs> that's the hilarious part about it. It's similar to him. It's like, eh, like IT was my original goal, but like good thing I didn't really get into deep into that world because <laughs> I imagine I wouldn't really be doing this podcast now in this format the way it is now as if i went straight into the it field so it's it's actually amazing how that works and you said he got fired twice so was it was it the same job it wasn't the same job was it well his story was he worked for the same company so the first time he got fired he was in an it role and so he got fired and then one of the managers gave him a call a few weeks later and said if you want to come back, you can come back in a more training type role. So he came back in a training capacity and he did that for a year or two. But then they terminated him from that role as well. So having experienced the acts twice from the same company, he said, that was it. I'm going to do something else. And deep down, Dom, he wanted to be his own boss anyway. Yeah, that's right indeed. That's right indeed. Indeed. So my goodness, like that's the thing. A lot of folks want to be their own boss from the outside looking in, especially if they have some entrepreneurial friends on social media. Like, oh yeah, their life looks freaking amazing. Like my goodness, they're they're being their own boss. It's amazing. Like I want to do that too. But any advice for those who may want to make that jump in terms of preparation? Because the thing is, it's not as easy as it may look. Can I share a story, Dom, about the whole preparation situation? Um, early on in my career as doing an accounting role, I worked alongside a fellow graduate. So I came into the company in an, a graduate opportunity where you rotated through the organisation in different accounting departments to get your experience and then you would be fast-tracked in terms of promotional opportunities. I worked alongside a gentleman called Perry. So me and Perry did exactly the same accounting work. The only difference was he loved what he did, whereas I, after a period of time, the same regular monthly routine was absolutely soul-destroying. So one day I, I took Perry aside and said, Perry, why... Do you enjoy this work so much? And Perry took me back to his childhood. I'm a genuinely believer, Dom, that a person's childhood plays a key part in shaping their career aspirations. Perry, as a, as a junior, grew up on his parents' farm. And what he observed was that farms, farm life is about years where you have good harvests and then there's years that there are poor harvests. And the lesson he took out of that was his parents were very smart financially and they saved money from the good harvest to support them through the bad harvest. And then there were other farmers in his district who didn't do that. They took their money from the good harvest, went on a spending spree, and then when the bad harvest comes, they struggled because they did, didn't have a buffer to sort of... Uh, to lean on. So that became Perry's catalyst for becoming an accountant. So Perry said to me, I'm in this organisation to acquire taxation skills, budgeting skills, financial planning skills, because in 10 years time, I am going to set up my own financial planning practice. So his preparation occurred from day one where he saw his corporate career as an apprenticeship to one day starting his own business. So he wasn't applying the side hustle as a preparation. It was the core focus of his corporate career, whereas I was simply coming in to earn an income. 
I was being the employee. Perry was becoming the entrepreneur, if you like, with a 10-year apprenticeship. So when the 10 years arrived, he was offered a redundancy payout. He took his money and because he wasn't ready to start his own practice, went to work for someone else in their own practice. When they eventually retired, he took over the business. That was his preparation. And that's an example I share with my clients. How is what you're doing today in your career preparation for the next journey? That's a darn good story right there. A darn good one. And that's some good future planning because, my goodness, like that is amazing. It's like, hey, at first you're like, oh, buy out the services, start his own practice. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? <laughs> Instead of having to go the rougher route of starting from scratch <laughs> the system was already there he had the apprenticeship and was able to take over the basically the ceo's role once he retired so that's freaking amazing and that's powerful too because a lot of folks may be like oh yeah i want to be an entrepreneur but at the same time it may be better to be an entrepreneur and see your current role as an apprenticeship exactly yes but at the same time, have the vision. Have a vision for yourself. I know in listening to a couple of uh, interviews you've been on, you're familiar with David Schwartz's book, The Magic of Thinking Big, Dom. Correct? Ooh. <laughs> this guess is five stars already. Okay. So, Dom, The Magic of Thinking Big is really about thinking like an entrepreneur, is it not? It is. <laughs> yes, it is. And one of the keys to stepping from an employee to entrepreneur that David talks about in his book is no excuses. The employee will always have excuses for not taking that step. And David in his book says it's no excuse. It's, it's a no excuse game. If you a fair, fair income about stepping from employee to entrepreneur, no excuses. Plan, prepare, focus, prioritize, but don't let your excuses stop you. Oh, that's right, indeed. Don't let them excuses stop you, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. That's right, man's dropping this hot five today, y'all. That's right. That's right, indeed. Because that's that excuse-itis right there. That's right, indeed. Don't want that in your life. You want that solution-itis. That's right. Focus on exactly. solutions, indeed. Yes, indeed. And that's what my man Tony is doing, indeed. So, my goodness. So, with this wonderful second edition of the book coming up, is my my sharing a bit more about what to expect from the book? Because you got some Phoenix principles here, and my man shared probably about a good one or two already, if I caught them correctly. Anything else folks should be on the lookout for? Well, a key element, Dom when it comes to a person's career. Have you read, I know you're widely read, have you read Michael Gerber's books, the E-Myth book, series of books? Ah, I heard of them. Still need to finish them. <laughs> okay. So, Dom, Michael talks about there's three types of people in that manage a small business. So the number one person is the technician. So they are the person who does the work, the day-to-day -day business. Then you've got a manager who organises the troops to make sure that they're efficient and effective in what they do. And then you have the entrepreneur. And the entrepreneur is the creative, visionary, looking out into the future. The, vision, uh, the entrepreneur is creating the future, if you like. The technician and the employee type person is just keeping today's wheels going round. And the aim of the book is to move you out of the day-to-day -day and out into the future in terms of becoming an entrepreneurial thinker. There was a famous psychologist called Carl Jung, and he said, there's certain problems in life can't be solved. And I found that in my career, 
I couldn't actually solve my career dissatisfaction problem. It's something you have to outgrow. Does that make sense, Tom, or do you would like an ask a question around that? Hey, makes sense indeed. Makes perfect sense, got outgrow. Okay, so what exactly do I mean by outgrowing this employee? So can I share another story, Dom? Of course you can. Okay, so there was a pivotal moment in my career, if you like, or life in general, where I hit a bit of a crisis and decided to go on one of those sort of one-week retreats, which I'm sure you've probably heard of, where people just take time out and they become introspective and they take stock of where their life is at, where they want to go, and, you know, document things in the journal. And I'm on this retreat, and one morning we were going walking towards an adventure camp. So there's all these obstacles, if that makes sense. And one of the obstacles, Dom, was high, a set of high ropes where you have to climb from one point on the rope to the other side. Now, I have got an extreme <laughs> fear of heights, okay? So on this morning, I'm beginning to get extremely anxious and nervous as we're approaching these set of ropes. And I've watched about 20 of my colleagues go across and they took about five or six minutes to get across. And then it's my turn. And <laughs> I, I, I slowly climb up this ladder and get to the point of the starting point where I have to step off the, the ladder or the timber slat and I have to get on the ropes. And I start shaking enormously. I start shaking by the hands. I start shaking by the feet. And because I'm doing that, the ropes are now moving and it's making it even worse to get across. But slowly by slowly, I start taking steps and then I stop at a certain point when I, I have to regather myself. And then there's people from below sort of cheering me on, if you like, and just, you know, keep going, Tony. You, You'll get there. Just stay calm. Get there. So after about 15 minutes, which was about three or four times longer than most people took to get across, I finally get across and step off this. I'm absolutely covered in perspiration, if you like, with the anxiety. Step off and hit solid ground. And I just take a deep breath, just relief that I'm back on safe territory again. And a few people sort of come along and tap me on the shoulder and say, well done, well done, Tony. And I'm feeling reasonably satisfied with myself. And then the next person goes up and it's their turn. And as I'm sort of sitting on my own, just regathering myself, because I'm totally spent energetically, if you like, Don. <laughs> and <laughs> I've just spent everything I had getting across this set of ropes. And then two ladies who were probably in their mid-40s, who I didn't connect very much with on the training program on this week, during that week, came up to me. They approached me and said, Tony, we weren't planning on going up there and doing the high rope exercise. Um, but having seen you going through what you did <laughs> with the enormous fear and thinking, they think, well, if he can do it, then so can we. I'm not sure whether that was a compliment or a bit of a backhanded slap in the face, but either, <laughs> either way, Tom, um, the two ladies go up there and they both get across. And they did it far more easily than I did. And that was an interesting moment for me because Watching them get across from one side to the other, given they had decided they weren't going, previously decided they weren't going to do it, I got more satisfaction from seeing them get across because I had inspired something in them by the fact that I'd overcome my fear to do it. Then the satisfaction I got from getting across 
for, for me. And I hope that sort of resonates with your audience. Really, satisfaction and success isn't so much what we do for ourselves. It's what we help someone else accomplish for themselves. And that became a vital lesson for me. And I guess that's one of the things that inspired me writing a book and becoming a coach is what we can do for someone else. So that's another important message of the Phoenix Career Principles is making your career about a bigger life purpose in the service of others. So I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. A good thing you conquered your fear, man, because your action inspired those ladies. Like, yeah, hey, hey, we can do it. He was shaking like a leaf, but he still did it. We can do it too, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So my goodness, man. My goodness. So since a man has been going on a bit of a tour with the... Uh, book to come and continuously helping out others is there a question that you wish to be asked more often when you're on the guest side of the game on these podcasts well i guess one of the questions i'm asked you know why did you write a book now dom i know you've written a few books oh yeah can i ask you what was your motivation for writing the books <laughs> oh yeah well first one that was written on the dare funny enough because i was giving some motivational talks and networking with people and usually those who speak usually write or at least that's one of my, one of my mentors says like yeah if you're a good speaker that means you're a good writer and hey you should have something to sell after you're done speaking and i was like uh like i almost failed high, high school because of english like i ain't no good writer and <laughs> lo and behold <laughs> ended up doing it anyway <laughs> and have you got feedback from people that the book had a significant impact on their lives? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Folks even wrote books of their own afterwards because they're like, hey, if this one, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so can yeah. you see how your book lit a flame in someone else to write theirs? So I'm just a, a, a really big believer Dom, in the power of books. Um, back in my late twenties, I used to read property investment magazines, Dom, and they would share uh, insights about where to best buy the best value properties to buy in what locations and what were the best strategies in terms of fixed interest or variable interest at the time. Uh, to help people buy their first home, which is a, a really big challenge for a lot of people, is um, home affordability today. And one of the things they would do in these property investment magazines, Dom, would be interview these people who were in their early 20s who had managed to buy three or four or half a dozen properties. And these people were in their early 20s and they would interview them and they would ask, well, how, how did you manage to buy these properties? And they would say, well, as a youngster, I, I saved money and I worked multiple jobs and I lived frugally. I learned how to save and not spend. And, and that was the way I started buying property. And, and then the equity from the first became the opportunity to borrow more money and buy the next one. And one of the questions they always got asked was, who was a key influencer in you going out and building wealth for yourself? And I reckon seven times out of 10, it's because they read a particular book. What was that book? Dom. Ooh. Probably think and grow rich. <laughs> Close. Rich dad, poor dad. Oh, another great one. <laughs> okay. Again, it's another book about how to become an entrepreneur. Think and grow rich. 
uh, came about because Napoleon Hill interviewed entrepreneurs, people like Henry Ford and um, Andrew Carnegie, who were entrepreneurs. So Think and Grow Rich is about how to become entrepreneur. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is, and David Schwartz's book, The Magic of Thinking Big. These are books that expanded people's mindset. And for me, if you research a lot of the successful people in the world today, they go back to saying one of the secrets of this, their success was they were prolific readers in their childhood. Elon Musk is one of those. Oprah Winfrey is another. Warren Buffett was someone else. I came across a story of a, an American gentleman who had to finish his education quite early because of his family dynamics. Okay. And so he took it upon himself to self-educate and he would read widely. And one day he found out that there was a farmer who lived miles away from his home, owned a book, and this young man wanted to read it. So he walked for miles to go and get this book from the farmer. And he purchased the book from the farmer, but he didn't have any money to purchase it. So what he did was, was work for three days on this farmer's farm, helping him in order to secure this book. That gentleman, through his own self-education, and doing whatever it took, even walking for miles to get hold of a book that he cherished, eventually became an American president. His name was Abraham Lincoln. So can you see that when you have this burning desire to do something important with your life, your career should be the pathway or the gateway to fulfilling that greater life purpose? which is another message I'd like to share with people. So it's not so much about the book, uh, Dom. It's about getting a message out into the world. I'm a genuine believer that every single person who's listening to this podcast today has a message, has a story, has a life lesson to share with someone that can make a difference. How you get that out in the world, whether it's through a book, through becoming a speaker, attending podcasts. Don't deny yourself nor others the opportunity of getting your book out, your message out in the world. There's a biblical passage, Dom, that I always go back to, which is called Don't Hide Your Light Under a Bushel. And that's one of the underlying philosophies that drives what I do today is the importance of making sure that our light, our gift, is shared in the service of both ourselves, developing ourselves fully, but in the service of others. I really love the fact that you do this podcast and you get guests on. In one way, it looks like it's a podcast with an interviewer and an interviewee. In another way, there is a deeper story happening here where you're helping people take their light and sharing it in the world rather than keeping it hidden under a bushel. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And that's definitely the aim, too. Definitely the aim, too. Because, yeah, writers need all the help they can get, especially... The folks who are the big name writers indeed, folks. Besides, <laughs> some of the stuff you read from the lesser known writers are better than the big time writers. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, Dom. I, um, I mentioned earlier that there's the three people. There's the employee, Dom, the manager, and the entrepreneur. So just the process of writing a book, as you know, and you've written several, is a journey. And in speaking to other authors, one of the aspects I've identified is this element of the employee, the manager, and the entrepreneur 
exists not just in small business, as Michael Gerber identified, <laughs> nor mm. does it just exist in the corporate world where I identified that. It also exists in our day-to-day -day world when someone comes to write a book. So what do I mean by that? So there's people who start writing a book. They finish the first chapter, Dom, and then they put it away. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the employee who doesn't really want to put their light out in the world. They might get criticized. <laughs> People won't like it. Okay. Or there's another story I came across. A gentleman wrote his book, completed it, but Dom, he never pushed the publish button. Mm. Okay. Again, there was a fear of putting out his message in the world. That is the employee. So one of the people who's had a significant impact on my life is a gentleman called Abraham Maslow, who's most famous for Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, we start off with meeting our survival needs and then we move to social needs and status and then to self-actualization. So Abraham Maslow said, you know, our life is a journey of taking either a step backwards into safety or a step forward into growth. Each of the pe people listening to this podcast needs to ask themselves at any given moment when they're called to do something, write a book, give a speech, step into a greater career, are you taking a step back into safety or are you taking a step forward into growth? The phoenix is always taking a step forward into growth by destroying the old aspect of itself. Now, the entrepreneur, what happens to the entrepreneur who writes a book? So. The employee may or may not ever publish it because they're concerned about um, what the public will think about it. What does the employee do when they write a book is they build a business behind it. Can you see, Dom, they are thinking big, as David Schwartz said. It's not just about the book. It's about the message, about the business behind it. It's the difference we can make to people's lives. That's right, indeed. My man's preaching, baby. My man's preaching today, baby. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. So right, indeed. Yep, and that's definitely the power, indeed. Especially when you not only write books and share with folks and help them to get more courage, especially when they have enough courage to finally press that darn publish button. It's like getting to the one-yard line and then just giving up. Like, nah, we're not even going to run the play. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dom, you said earlier, you know, um, I um, spoke to one of my clients and um, they had left a government job many years ago. And a lot of this person's work colleagues said, you're, you know, you're, you're crazy for leaving this safe job and uh, starting your own business. It's just too risky. You know? um, so I said to this client, I said, um, do you ever go back and still speak to s and see some of these people that?" Um, are still employed in this company and she's she said yeah i I'm, i met with them recently and um and i said to her well how are they going well she goes well some of them are depressed and uh you know and are on antidepressant medications and the reason for that is because they have remained trapped in jobs they hate and when you become trapped in a job you hate, it's, it's more than just, you know, uh, this feeling of imprisonment. It's actually your life is disappearing in front of your eyes. I, um, I, one of the stories I share in the book, and it was just a, a little story, and someone who read the book said, I really love 
that story and I thought, really? I just thought, I didn't think it was that significant. And it was a story of a gentleman, his name was Steve, who I worked with, although I didn't have a close relationship with him. And what Steve did, Don, was he kept a little counter on his desk, believe it or not. And each night when he packed up his suitcase and his papers to, to, to go home and walk out of the office, he would click down this counter. And this counter was essentially, he was counting down the days left before he retired because he really hated his job. Mm. And anyway, this story really resonated with this lady who read, read the first version of the book and, and the story still remains in the, the second version. So the question to ask, I ask people is, is your career and your job just a mechanical process that you're counting down the days to retirement? Or are you making each day of your life count? So for those listening to this who are employees stuck in a job that they don't like, are you just sitting there counting down your days to retirement, feeling depressed, suffering health issues, or are you working to something greater? Are you prepared to cross that rope, overcome your fears, and inspire other people's lives and make the most of your talent? I'm a big believer, Dom, that we have a responsibility to share our talent with the world. Why is that so? Any answer, Don? Hey, it's because we're here for each other. <laughs> That's the main reason. <laughs> well, yes, uh, we're not just here for ourselves. Clearly, we're also here to support someone else's journey. But I came across a quote, the reason why we need to share our talent talent is because it's not ours it's a gift from the gods Woo. does that make sense oh i agree with that one wholeheartedly oh, okay yeah. <laughs> so now there's a bigger game of play <laughs> And I, I take that really seriously. It's not my talent. It's a gift I've been given. And it's not just there for me to earn a basic income so I can survive on this earth. It's to have an impact on other people's lives, which is what you're doing through this podcast medium, is giving people the opportunity to get their message out there, to express their talent. That's my message. To your audience don't just see your career as a job where you're performing a set of tasks see it either as a an apprenticeship to a higher purpose or in fact it is that where you're in service to someone else oh that's right my man been dropping that hot fire baby that's right non-stop hot fire indeed and it's kind of a pun intended Corporate Phoenix, baby. The Phoenix Principles, baby. That's right. The double P and D. The double P and D, baby. That's right. Get those wings. Those radiant wings of reinvention, y'all. And rebirth, indeed. So, the fun question I've been loving to ask guests recently. And that is, if your wonderful book, The Wonderful Corporate Phoenix, indeed. Especially the second edition. It's going to be even shinier and more beefy. <laughs> for lack of a better word. Than... The first edition, if it was a food, what would it be and why? If it was a food, what would it be and why? I think it will be it would be a walnut. So the walnut is in the shape of a brain, though so the book is there to stimulate and expand our minds and to feed our mind but also to inspire our heart 
So probably it could also be a red capsicum because the red capsicum is in the shape of a heart also. Sweet. <laughs> First time someone actually said walnut. All right, cool. There we go. And of course, a red capsicum as well. That's right indeed. Probably have to Google that later. Is that a, is that a fruit? Uh, I think of the red capsicum is a vegetable. Sweet. That's right indeed. So that means it's good for you all. That's right. That's right, indeed. The vegans are happy. <laughs> a couple of the recent guests have been sta saying steak recently, so I was like, oh, yay, the vegans are happy. <laughs> it's gluten-free, y'all. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but hey, enough muscle in this. Well, we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're a 25 again, but you're still in 2022 with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? If I was 25, I would say be who you are. Looking back at my career, Dom, I played the corporate role, if you like, and took on the corporate voice. And even when I wrote uh, my first book, The Corporate Phoenix, and when I was producing the draft for my editor at the time, I remember her saying to me, it's really written in dry corporate speak. Uh, we need to change that and make it a little bit more conversational and friendly and come a little bit more from the heart. So my time, the, the, the years that I spent in corporate life actually shapes you, moulds you into sort of a bit of a corporate robot that you speak that way, you dress a certain way, you follow a set of rules, whereas the true gift and message I would share to someone in their 20s is make your career an extension of who you are, an extension of your own personality, if you like, so that you're always being true to yourself. Don't take up a role and then become an actor just to, to meet the needs of an employer. So be true to who you are rather than becoming an actor. And then spend, like I did, years taking off that corporate costume in terms of the way I spoke, the way I wrote, and the way I dressed. Woohoo! That's right, indeed. Take off that corporate costume, indeed. That's right. The double C folks weren't thinking about. It's like, yeah, let me CC you to this email right here real quick. I'm like, nope, we ain't doing no corporate costumes today, buddy. You're going to bring the real deal to work. That's right, indeed. And the real deal may involve plotting your escape or maybe transforming your current position to an apprenticeship and you grow into a new role because you overfill your current place, indeed. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. So for those who need to buy some copies of your fabulous books and share with the rest of the world and keep up with all the stuff that you're doing, Tony, what's the best way for folks to do so? Well, the book in around June, July this year will be available on Amazon. So the book is called The Phoenix Career Principles, Rising from Employee Ashes to the Flame of Entrepreneurial Success. So for anyone who's found this interview interesting and some of the stories have left an impression on them, then I recommend that they purchase that book that will be available on Amazon middle of the year. Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about, day middle of the year, baby. That's right. That's right, indeed. On this side of the globe, it'll be summer, indeed. That's right. It's a phoenix, a perfect bird for the season. That's right, indeed. So it's going to be hotter than fish grease, indeed. So get your popsicles ready. Get your ice cream ready to cool off while you're getting heated up and ready to rise up, indeed, like a phoenix from the ashes. And buy us copies of the book and share it with your friends and family, cat, dog, penguin, and of course, a wonderful cat, especially if it's just Dewey Cat indeed. So, any parting words before we close up shop, Tony? Parting words. Well, always remember there's a light inside you which 
you're meant to put out in the world. So you're here to give off light, not to chase the limelight. Thanks a bunch for tuning in and setting aside some of your time to listen to this wonderful podcast going north. If you really enjoyed what you heard, do me a solid and share this with your network and someone that you care about that would get something out of it too. And be sure to subscribe to hear more and heck, even check out the backlog if you would like because there are hundreds of episodes to choose from and they just keep getting better and not better. 